Okay. Now, that out of the way, let's continue recording. This will just be the next part, essentially. Split them up into new parts. I knew I'd freaking record for too long. It's because of all my goddamn rambling. With a little hesitation, Lily pushes forward her chin and closes her eyes in an unmistakable gesture. I accept gladly our lips touching as they do. I suddenly feel a hand shaking up my chest from underneath my shirt. The feeling of a hand against my bare skin is enough to make my heart suddenly spluttered. So she's in that kind of mood again. Well, I'm hardly one to complain. She does generally like this, and even with all my medications, my libido is thankfully still intact. You know what? We've seen this scene before, and it's one of those scenes at that as well. So, off screening! And then his soul fell over. But I'm still skipping the scene anyway. Oh wait, actually no, it's... When Lily's head comes to rest on my shoulder as I struggle to keep my eyes open. With no di more difficulty after each blink, I feel completely drained. Oh, I know the feeling, this how. I still feel drained after completing that game. I felt drained before that, honestly, because like... I'm 25 now, I'm quarter of a century old, you know, that kind of like... feeling, I don't know. Is I wonder how many people have that feeling when they t reach an age like that. It's like, oh, I'm 25, I'm so old, and then people like 50 years old is like, oh, that's nothing, man. But <laughs> you're just a pup, essentially. But seriously, it's just like, ah. Uh... But anyways, if you ha if you haven't seen this scene previously when we went through it, it's just like, why are you skimming through it? We lack context now. It's okay, Asao, it's all okay. No sooner does she say this than a small, quiet tune escapes her lips. Entirely too tired to think all I can do is listen to her soft humming. It's a soft, almost melancholic tune. It sounds familiar, but the more I try to remember its origin, the less I seem able to concentrate. I find this bit of dialogue, well, text, interesting here. It's thoughts. It's just like, so what is she humming? Is that important or not? Probably. Not. I don't know. Because I haven't played for this rabbit hole while I technically have now, haven't I? But I haven't seen a good ending yet, so maybe it's explained. Who knows? Some people, well, obviously, that have played it, but not me, and don't spoil it. I had a feeling and scent of her head gently resting on my shoulder and her warm body against my side are soothing. The soft humming of her voice, too, relaxes my mind as much as her warmth relaxes my muscles. This singular quiet moment, after all these fruckers or whatever, it makes me realize just how exhausted I've become. I can feel my eyelids slowly becoming heavier and heavier. Even with the chaos of before, and the dog barking in the background, I wish this moment would last forever. Not the dog barking in the background, though, because that get, would get annoying, wouldn't it? Lee and I together are sharing a single solitary occasion together, just as we used to. But if that's the case, why does she feel further away than she's ever felt before? I don't want to go on a field trip, Sal. Mean up, do 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 do. Of course, gotta do that. The loud clutter of books falling into the return slot abruptly breaks the grip of silence of the school library. It's becoming a habit for me to come to the library at least once a week. Not only does the reading itself keep me busy, but discussing books with Hanako and Lily also does. Obviously startled, you could suddenly twist towards the direction of the noise. I thought her used to be able to drop in books by now. Well, she does work here! Yeah. <sighs> oh, hello, Asao. Back again. It takes me a moment to respond, my mind still distracted by the familiar melody of Lily's humming that's hardly left my ears in the several days it's been since I fell asleep, fell asleep to it. Yeah, it's just, what melody is she humming there? That's like, I don't know, it just, that's like, got my interest, it's just like, curious, what was she humming? Hmm, uh, oh yeah, just return some books I borrowed. She cast her eyes downwards, presumably, to the bin books, uh, bin the books dropped into. You're a very heavy reader, aren't you? It's become a bit of a routine now. Pass the time, at least. I wish I had free time to pass. 
The small talk to depression in less than five seconds. I think that's a new record for her. She seems a bit down in general today, even compared to normal. I feel a bit down as well. Considering she has to work two jobs just to support herself, I could see how that would take a toll on her lifestyle. Come to think of it, the pay for a job here can't be all that bad. The idea of staff in such a prestigious private school going hungry strikes me as... Gunnery do they will live. But the two jobs must take a lot of time. I'd probably never imagine. You're lucky being a student. Do you think you'll be able to go to university? If she's asking, then I guess that's the expected result of having this kind of education. Private schools like this don't exactly come cheap. I guess I have the money, I think. I've got plans which will require going to one, and my marks are good enough. It's more a matter of how I'll pay to do so. University costs so much that I'm thinking uh, I'm having to work two jobs to afford to enter it. Pay for daily expensive too makes it a lot harder. But like I said, the previous time we saw this scene, they just feel like university. It's like, it comes with a benefit, you get more qualifications, but you gotta pay for those qualifications. And a lot of people tend to get screwed over by it because they end up freaking like having to get a job just to pay for it and then like all the money they earn from their job goes to paying that and then even once they're done with that they're still paying for it. Just boggles the mind. If we're eating this much though, that means you're doing well in school, right? Interesting logical jump. Not an altogether wrong one though. Suppose so. I didn't find any exams very hard, aside from maybe one or two. Do you mind if I ask what studies you're pursuing in university? You could appear to generally brighten out the question. Anthropology. To be specific, I'm specialised in the history of classical era Athenian civilization and democracy. She really seems to know her stuff. Such enthusiasm is to be admired. It's nice to see her generally excited about something. I guess even somebody like Yuko can be happy if she has a visible road ahead of her. That's still here if you... Her first job at a sudden interruption coming from my pocket. Seriously, what the hell? You got an old-fashioned ringtone. Apologizing profusely and quickly shuffling into the hallway as I fumble with the cover of my mobile phone, I glanced at the screen. You know this, apologizing profusely, just makes me think of Earthbound. Man, that's not even the first time I've freaking referenced Earthbound in this one recording here. Weird, it's a mobile phone I don't recognize. Considering I can count the number of people with my number on one hand, I briefly wonder whether it's some telemarketer that lucked out. Hello, it's Sao Nakai speaking. Jeez, pick up faster next time. Anyway, guess who? <laughs> yeah, I'm not even going to make her sound like she's given the impression. It only takes me a second to recognize the distinctive deep brushed voice. Hey Misha, didn't expect you to call me. Well maybe she's not doing any impression, I don't know. Huh, you actually think I sound like her? Not at all accurate, no she wasn't, so it doesn't matter. I don't remember giving you my number though, so I thought I'd mess with you. Oh that, I got Lily to give it to me, not hard. She possibly brims with pride at the statement. She's trying to get me caught up in her pace, I know it. I suppose I shouldn't be surprised that the two would share my number though, given how close they are. So, what's up? You're free right now. I guess. Why? Could you meet me at the park in town? Just want to talk to you about some stuff. Is that an invitation to a date? What? Of course not! She sounds suddenly crestful and her previous teasing nature having instantaneously left. It seems strange for her. Anyway, I don't see why not. When do you want to meet? Kind of now-ish. Wait, right now, but it's... The dead silence suddenly coming from the phone announces the fact that she has unceremoniously hung up. God damn it. For a long time, I just stand there staring at the call ended message on the screen while replaying the conversation in my head. What the hell, Acura? Throwing a glance up and down the street, I cross the road and step into the park. I've learned to police myself on such a walks mostly because the least slower speed during our forays into town means I have to consciously slow myself down. The sign I have accurate and expect me to be immediately prompt. 
I still find it kind of weird that her CG is uh, on the first page of CG mode. Also, I didn't include her CG in the New Year video because, well, it would contain spoilers, really. And I'd like wanted it to like kind of uh, for Lily's out section, essentially, like in the New Year's video. Like, it goes up to the leaving Hokkaido bit, you know? I don't want it to be a part that's even further into it appear before that, you know? I want it to be fitting and s run smoothly through the route, but without spoilers. Also, back to the New Year video thing a bit, because I'm gonna have it, like, uh, you know, play at the end of the previous part, when I split it into two parts and all that. Is the third recording, music-wise, You'll notice, like, I'm combining a bunch of melodies from the game, essentially. Just like, one moment I'll be playing, uh, I forget what it's called. You know the one where it's like... Doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo. No, I, I actually don't know how to freaking... Actually, like, you know, hum it or whatever, you know? How does it go? Uh... Comfort, I think that was the name of the track. I was playing that at the start, and then, like, when I switched key, I played what's it called Painless History, the one like. Doo -doo 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 -doo. No, that sounds more like Jurassic Park when I'm trying to do it. But you know that track? Then I switch key right after that. It goes into Innocence, we're like. Doo -doo 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 -doo. But because I switch key again, it's like, God damn it, and throw improv in there. It's just like. Because I had it on a loop pedal, you know? My effects pedal has a loop on it, so I just like came up with chord progression is like okay, A major, E major, D major, something like that, then F sharp minor, G sharp minor, which is where the key changes, so that I could include painless I mean painful history or whatever the track's called. Then I switched it up to F major and B flat major, F major and all that for the uh, right key for playing the innocence track. And then it goes to an A, which gave it a harmonic minor feel, which was kind of unintentional, but it's kind of interesting. Then it just goes back to the other melody, and I even threw in that one melody that plays at the jazz club. It also plays in other sections in the visual novel, but you know the one, that kind of jazzy feel to it. Played a bit of that as well. So yeah, quite a bit of uh, melodies thrown into that one. Take certainly a couple of seconds to spot her waiting on a bench with a can of beer in her hand. The look she gives me as I walk up lacks any hint of acknowledgement or greeting. What's with that look? I needn't have come, you know. I knew you would. You're that kind of person, after all. I lower my brow at her remark as she disposes of the can, emptied by the time I arrived, and a metallic clatter rings out. I her takes a seat on the old wooden bench, and I follow her lead. She takes another can of beer from beside her and opens it before speaking. Taking a large gulp, she seems to really like that stuff. You know, I think I said this last time we saw this scene as well, but you know, drinking outdoors in the middle of the day is not usually frowned upon. I suppose I don't need to ask uh, what this is about, or rather, who it's about. I heard from Lily that you asked about our family. They share more than phone numbers, that's for sure. I'd probably be very worried right now if it weren't for the total lack of malice in her voice. Well, her tone sounds almost wistful. Idle curiosity, mostly. I have to admit, I'd never have guessed you two were half Scottish. She gives a wry chuckle of amusement. I've heard that before, trust me. A small smile falls from her face, her eyes looking ahead distantly. Aside from the occasional elderly couple talking as they slowly walk their meandering paths and the odd aging car, it pleasantly quiets. She didn't tell you everything though, did she? It was pretty brief. Your parents live in Scotland, she hasn't met them since she was 12 and she wants to meet them again. So it surprised me how devoted she is to our parents, for all the good they did us. The way she says it sounds almost recent. She gives a small sigh, as if to quickly brush the feelings away. Why do you think they left us out? Oh, I don't think they left. From what Lily told me, it was because of work. I guess a pretty decently paying job was involved as well, given the way our parents seemed to live. 
So Lily went to a private school and that's why she carries herself with the airs and graces of the upper class. Yeah, since business in Inverness boomed, I followed side and moved directly to the same city as its headquarters. That's just a conclusion I'd thought to come to though. They're too good natured. You don't think they left for the career? I'm sitting here bitching to you about it. What do you think? You might look at me. I've always felt that place was kind of creepy. Like it was an isolated highway for those proper society doesn't want to see nor hear. It probably just ruined the fact that Lily wasn't old enough to be shoved there by the time they left. A long silence follows her abrupt and very harsh criticism of her own parents and Yamaku. Lily's blindness is hardly something that could be simply ignored for a high class family attempt to keep up appearances, much less so uh, when a uh, lucrative offer is on the table. Eventually, Akira gives a derisive snort, her feelings coming to a head. Moving to secure a financial future with his new job posting, even at the time I hardly believed it. Not one to simply be an avenue for uh, venting, I gently try to steer the discussion. So you stick in Japan with Lily then? Either I stayed with her or she went to live with an ailing grandmother and grandfather. What about Shizune's family? They're cousins then. Our fathers hate each other, I'd have been more than happy to tell them to go screw themselves and live with them anyway, but Lily wouldn't have wanted that. Also, I had an offer for a job by then, so we did our best to keep our parents' house in proper shape, and try to continue our lives as if, it never as if they'd never left. So you just lived by yourselves? Basically, well, we had school and I had my jobs, so we weren't exactly languishing. We were schooling or study and having to do chores while I worked though. I can't help feeling like I failed her. In the end I tried to be there for her and I screwed it up. Spend a 19 year old to be a mother with her blind child. It's ridiculous. So Lily and Akira lived alone after their parents moved, with Lily largely taking care of herself. Guess that explains her apparent independence compared to many of you in Yamaku. I may have lived alone much of the time since my parents both worked, but that's just something else entirely. Sorry for making you listen to my moaning, Sal. I don't mind at all, but mind if I ask why you're telling me all this? Hmm, you always were curious. Context, I suppose. Life isn't a fairy tale, Sal. Some people have to learn that the hard way. She takes a long drink from the can in her hand, her face becoming more depressed and distant. Broke up with boyfriend a few days ago. After I leave, we're not going to be able to see each other again. But that's how life is. You can't just set your life up and expect to stay that way forever. Sometimes stuff happens that you have to roll with, even if it means hurting yourself or others. She takes a long breath before looking up at the bright orange sky. Damn, if I smoked, I could take a nice long drag ride about now and look kind of cool. I want to respond to her in whatever way I can. But I feel utterly useless. This kind of situation is one I've never been in, and I simply don't have the experience to say anything meaningful to comfort her. Akra looks over and evidently picks up on this, much to my embarrassment. Must look pretty pathetic right now. Why not about this someone I barely know? Hardly, and I'm pretty much an expert on looking pathetic. She gives a chuckle of the act, feeling like a personal victory for me. You're a good kid, Asao. When I said that I proved you being with my sister, I wasn't joking or just being nice. She picks herself up off the seat with a grunt, one that seems ill-fitting given her age and throws the now empty can into the bin after one last swig. It's just unfortunate that it doesn't really count for much in this world. When I said I was leaving for Scotland, I was doing it because a good position opened up in our company's headquarters. You know, folks told me that when we were at their place, though, they also gave Lily a summons to rejoin them in Inverness. No way. Her evasiveness when asked about her future, that awkwardness that had steadily grown between us, that uncharacteristic outburst of anger, all of them suddenly fit into place. As do all those other scenes, like on the Kaido thing. I mean, think about it. This was decided when she went to Scotland. When she returned, that was when they decided to go to Hokkaido, and everything beyond that has been with her knowing this fact. That puts things into a different perspective. The same family that she reminisced about after Hanako's birthday party, the same family that left her and Akira to themselves after taking flight to greener pastures. 
Uh, I feel stupid for never concerning Lily on what was... Cornering, I mean, on what was bugging her. Never even considered if something had happened during her trip to her family's home at Inverness. And now, a sense of unease grows in my chest, if her family has summoned her to join them in Scotland, all the way on the other side of the earth. But she... accepted. Lily hasn't told me what she plans to accept, but it seems she hasn't told you either. That's why I called you down here to talk, Sal. Context, huh? I sit back, my feelings of worry and frustration with her dad written all over my face. Lily is a strong person, Sal, but she's not infallible. I guess it's my job to worry about her, being her older sister. But I think that you deserve to know. I understand. You're okay, you sound depressed. Well, isn't that understandable? No, I'm just thinking. That's good, thinking's good. Being rash won't get you anywhere. Well, it depends what you're thinking, really, isn't it? Like, overthinking. I know that feeling, you know? That's never good, is it? Like, when you overthink things, it's like, ah, you just... It becomes a repetitive loop and you just feel like shit. She looks at her watch, barely moving her wrist. I've got to go. Will you be okay? I'll be fine, don't worry. I'll have to talk to Lily about it and get everything sorted out. She gives a smile, but it doesn't feel all that genuine or sincere. Really, Professor doubts around the fact that Lily's on the respite of the biggest decision of her life and is trying to take the entire burden on herself. And part of that burden is the matter of our relationship. By the time I look up, Hacker is already walking off with her hand held up. For the first time in a long while, I finally have an answer to something. Perhaps not even that, but at least I now have the right question to ask. Will you leave or stay? <laughs> Hurry, Lily! I'm moving as fast as I can. I can barely make out Lily's voice over the deafening bounding of the rain, even though I just like pulling around. The situation falls great. I turn forward my free hand in my head in a futile attempt to keep at least my head dry. My vision is weird grey scale, much like the sky. <laughs> this really is broken well for summer, and the last kind of climate I'd want for a day. Now honestly, aside... No, no, actually. This is more like a kind of bluish grey. The sky outside right now is more of a whitish grey. And it's currently not raining. This I don't think it is. Uh, anyways, a pity I didn't check the weather forecast beforehand, one of the very few times I've ever done so. Well, it's hard to say that Sunday afternoon would be fine. Looking to Lily, her shoulders are by now completely drenched, with her right hand holding tight with mine and her left gripping her refractive cane. The horrid downpour came on just as we were between our destination and Yamaku, so we decided to try rushing the rest of the route rather than doubling back. Don't lay on you so running this fast, Lily using all her concentration just to avoid tripping over it. You know, it's kinda of late into these this recording to like say this, but isn't it kinda of weird that I'm just like on screen these scenes again? It kind of like I don't know, because if we skip through these scenes, would we get like right towards the very end of Lily's, you know, good ending straight away? Would would the last few scenes be really quick or what? I don't know what to expect. So, do you know where we're going? And besides, you know, bring context, because it's been a while since I recorded, you know? Bring some more context to the scenes. Whenever they come for the new ones. Even she's reduced to shouting to try and be heard of the combined noise of the wind and the rain. The chat, the rest of my voice is completely drowned out by an even heavier burst of rain. The what? The Shanghai. How far is it? It shouldn't be far now. It doesn't take long before I call out to her once again. Looks like we're safe. It's just up ahead. I quickly pull up to a stop just in front of the familiar exterior. The lantern outside still given off its reliable glow and wait for Lily to capture her breath before going in. Ladies first. The tiny bell inside rings up at home the door open for her. Why do I sing like a goddamn opera singer? 
A smile on a flight not be my reward for entering myself. As I step in behind her and wipe my feet, only a quick glance is necessary to notice the distinct lack of activity. The Shanghai doesn't seem to get much in the way of patronage, and today is no different. Only a couple of tables are occupied. You know, I need a drink. Be right back. Raw I eat. As I step in behind her and wipe her feet. You know, that's an interesting thing when you really think about it. Like, if you play an instrument and you try to figure out a melody, it takes time, right? But if you listen to the music, you can do the melody so easily with just your voice. Like, vocals can kind of count as an instrument in their own way, but it's not kind of amazing when you think about it. You just listen to a melody like this, like... You're going along to the melody just perfectly fine, you know? But if you're figuring it out on an instrument, it might take a little bit of time. Depends on the melody, I guess. Well, honestly, if it's a melody, I can figure it out pretty easily on my keyboard or guitar. It's when it goes into kind of uh, a different kind of, I don't know how to describe it, a non-melody, I guess, or a complicated kind of melody. It's like if it has a distinct melody, it's easy to work out. Because it's like, I don't know, it feels easier to work out for me. When it's stuff like, say, this, for example, with the guitar going on there, it feels like that would take more time than, say, that right there, that melody. In fact, didn't I figure this melody out on my keyboard one time in a previous part? I can't remember what part it was, but I remember I had my keyboard and I literally figured out this melody. It's C major, if I recall. Anyways, only a quick glance is necessary to notice this student lack of activity in the Oh, I read that actually, didn't I? Only a couple of tables are occupied. Uh, yeah. Summoned by the bells ringing, a most expected person comes to greet us. Welcome to the Shanghai! Luca looks chipper today. Trying to predict her moves is pretty hard, but it's a nice change from the norm. Hello, Yuko. Hey. Good afternoon, you two. She takes a deep bow, somewhat taken aback as she writes herself again and gets a better look at us. What happened to you? You both look... Her eyes drift towards the glass of the door behind us. Oh, oh, oh dear! We're inside now, at least. I think that's the most important thing. It's nice and cozy. You're lucky to be working inside today. My voice there. Ah, <laughs> oh, man. You just hear that? Me going like that? Yeah. Still got that cold. You know what? It's rain. <laughs> it's just not helping. Is it? It's like, I feel like I'm out in the rain. But I'm not, actually. But I have got a cold, and it sucks. Uh, I mean, it has been nice and quiet. I like days like this. Oh, wait, um, sorry, is there anything you'd like? French vanilla tea, please. French vanilla tea. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? There's different variety of teas, but I wouldn't know that. It's like, but you're British! I mean, there's a thing with me, it's just like... People comment on my accent just like, Are you American? I'm not American, man. I was born here in freaking Wales, man. I, d I don't even live in the US. I've never even visited the US. I've never even left the island, more or less, you know. Because, you know, technically. Well, actually. Technically, I have. I've been to Northern Ireland in the past. I mean, that's part of the UK, but it's technically not you know, part of Britain itself, like, you know, the islands. It's kind of weird when you think about that, because of, like, the influence that it's had over it. You know, same with Japan, when you think about it. It's just an island, essentially. It's like, if you, like, look at continents, like, Britain, like, can be considered a part of Europe, but it's not a part of the continent, because it's not connected, because there's a bit of sea between it. Same with uh, Japan and Asia, isn't it? There's a bit of separation there. And then you got like Australia and what do they call it? Australasia, I think they call that section of the world. It's just like you got that. And I forget what I was even rambling about. 
uh, what was my point there? Just like, oh yeah, it's so like, British, right? Just like, I thought that you Brits are all like, yes, tea and crumpets and hot, um, yes, posh. No. I mean, I don't mind tea, but I don't drink it much, if at all. Same with coffee, honestly. Don't mind it, though. You know what I find weird is, like, hearing that in the US, I'm not sure if, if it's, like, a regular thing or not, but, like, when you hear about iced tea or something, and I, I don't understand that at all. Does they actually, like, literally have tea, but cold? How's it... Just... I have no idea. I don't really know much about tea, but when we have tea, you know... Cold is certainly not the ideal type of tea here. I'll have the same. But yeah, seems to be a lot of variations with tea. Was was it tea or was... I think it was. It's, it's origins in China, I'm not sure. Right, coming right up. At least how it was introduced in Britain anyway. I think. I'm not sure. She quickly skitters off with a determined look on her face, trying very hard not to forget our orders. If nothing else, she is at least dedicated to her dogs. I leave Lily to an empty seat before the two of us settle down. I, w I was about to go into that freaking accent again. What is with my voice? As usual, there's a large difference between my exhausted flopping down into my seat and Lily's delicate sliding into hers, her cane set beside her. For a while, I just idly watch the rain falling outside. The occasional person runs down the street trying to stay as dry as possible, and is often tightly gripping a rain-soaked umbrella. Lily sits just as quietly as I, her eyes closed as she intently listens to all that's happening. It's a comfortable, relaxing silence that exists between us. It's the type that we so often shared together in the past months. For Lily, at least. I can't help but replay the words of her sister in my mind, at times contrasting them to both our time spent together since I entered Yamaku, and to the way we've been since we started dating. May I have a chance? I can't work Lily out. It's as if the harder I try to second guess her emotions and her potential decision, the more difficult it becomes to reach a clear conclusion. It makes me doubt whether I'd ever really understood her. In the end, I'm going to have to ask, even though I very much want to avoid doing so. You seem quiet today, Sal. Really? You seem so enthusiastic about taking out on a date. I'd assumed you had something specific you wanted to do. No, not really. Just wanted to spend some time with you. Is that so? Fine, there was one thing. A little grin finds its way onto Lily's face, her knowing full well that she's best in me. Makes what I want to say all the more awkward. It was just, uh, Acker and I were talking. Oh. What's with that tone? You two do seem to get on well, don't you? Well, I do think she's a pretty cool person to talk with. It'd be nice if any of the teachers were anything like her. Cool. For a moment I tried to place her tone of voice, my mouth curling into a smirk as I realized it. You're not jealous, are you? I'm not jealous. After her teasing me over such a thing on our first date, I don't feel too bad having a little laugh at her expense this time around. You know, even in that scene, she know, knew about the fact that he is going to... Well, that... Well, we already know the fact now, even since, you know, playing back here again. But, uh, yeah, that she's, like, being summoned to move back to Scotland. She knew all along, even on their first date. You know what? I've noticed, well, it's obvious, isn't it? With her eyes. You know how, like, the characters, like, have this kind of white thing going up here and here? I forget. I'm not sure what it's called, honestly. And they usually have like a crescent kind of looking thing for like the darker or lighter color and it's like, I know, it's just like, for her it's like not there. That's kind of neat how they do that, to kind of like strike it out. It's just like, yes, she is blind, so we will draw her eyes a bit differently. Don't worry, it was mostly just actually, come to think of it, it didn't she have those uh, look in her eyes? in some of her CGs. 
you know, standard anime character look with the crescent eyes and all that. I don't know, it's been a while. No worry, it was mostly just everyday stuff. That said, there was something Akira mentioned that I wanted to talk to you about. When you went to see your family in Inverness a while back, she said. Akira told you about my family summons, hasn't she? Second stick by while I try to read Lily's face, an odd mixture of feelings written on it. She seems annoyed, but also somewhat confused. Um, here. You could tenderly slide our drinks under the table, her presence oddly small. As she walks back to the counter after a quick polite nod. This right here. I wanted to add this arpeggio into the New Year video. But I wasn't able to fit it in. Wait, is is this the track? No, this is moment of decision. It's a different track. But yeah, I like playing the arpeggio on guitar. It's like has a nice feel to it. Like, Anyways, as she walks back to the counter after a quick polite nod, I realize the yeah, air between me and Lily is stick, and her expressions are both somewhat pensive. Even though she says I should lead my own life, she still interferes at the worst time. Interferes, I mean. I don't think you should blame... Did I have an accent when I said you should? Blame Akra here, she's just looking out for you and it's not like I can't understand her concern over this. His irritation gives way to an awkward and largely unsuccessful attempt to mask her feelings. She really doesn't deal well with being cornered on personal topics. I know, but I just wanted some more time. I knew you'd have figured it out eventually, but... You know, this cold makes it freaking hard as a voice actor, honestly. Well, I suppose it's better than, say, doing the evil Blackboard voice. That always is a number on my throat, that does. You were intentionally hiding this from me. For, I mean, from me. How long were you planning to do so? As I said, I simply wanted more time to think it through. I wanted to be sure of my decision before telling you. What did you decide to do in the end? I know uh, what I want to, uh, what I wanted to say, but an awful feeling refuses to leave my guts. My family does really want me to return to them, and I will be going as well. I can still teach as a career whether it be here or there. So, you're going. How long have you known? Or I know you were asked when you first went to Scotland about a month ago. So, time. The frustration very nearly boils over. The fact that she's done this affects me more than it should. Well, of course it would! For her to not only be leaving, but to have been actively hiding her own plans for me. And after seeming for so long to be the one solid pillar of support and reliability I could depend on. It feels as if the foundation underneath me is suddenly shifting drastically, much faster than I can adapt to. Perhaps this isn't so much frustration as sheer unease. Lily. I'm sorry, I just... I wanted to think this through completely. I wasn't trying to take advantage of you. Please. I know, Lily, I know. It's just really sudden. I guess this means that once you go, you'll be breaking up. For one of the few times I've seen since I met her, she's generally lost for words. She doesn't look surprised, no doubt because the fact had dawned on her once she became sure of her decision, but rather... She appears generally unsure of how to deal with the situation now that it's in front of her. We could try pursuing a long distance relationship. They're getting more and more common these days after all. Even as she says it, the tone of her voice gives away that she doesn't truly believe what she's saying. Lily is far too old fashioned to be able to cope with a relationship without any kind of physical presence. Even I am to an extent. All we would ever be to each other would be a voice from the other side of the world. In the end, trying to rationalize everything's futile. Any attempts to try and connect what's happening with the future or past just seem to uh, get more difficult and more I concentrate. Those quiet moments when we just walked side by side, the precious time we spent with Hanako and Akira, the casual chatter we had during lunch times, the times we made love, the confessions of our feelings to each other. Not in that particular order, of course. I mean, the confessions of feelings came before the making love bit, but I'm ruined in the moment here. All pointless, all just a fleeting moment in our young lives. We're just two children pretend to be adults, aren't we? 
A long, long silence hangs in the air between us. The noise of the other patrons drinking and talking only makes the situation feel more strange and disconnected. Lily's face remains low, her dejected expression clouding it. I'm sorry, Sal. A simple apology and no more. She's left entirely without any full response or comments. You know, it's uh, kind of ruins the mood a bit, but how are they going to drink their tea after a moment like that? They'd be like, uh, 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 I'll just leave it here. <laughs> I don't know. With a long sigh, I gather what's left of my thoughts and ask the final question I have for her. When will he be going? I'll be leaving with Acra, so it'll be less than a week. The beginning of summer holidays. Now, yeah, brings back context to the trip from Hokkaido, doesn't it? When they were coming back and the Sao mentioned that. Just a little afterward, yes. Her tone is unusually slow and steady. Her apologetic and depressed mood all the more written on her face as she tries to hide it in her voice. In the end, I can't even keep my promise of going to Tanabata with her before she leaves. I look down, see my face face reflected in the by now lukewarm cup of neglected tea sitting in front of me. I really thought I had left this kind of expression behind. For a while, I just stared down into the still service, trying to sort through my emotions to get at what course of action I should take, will it be right now or in the future. But just as before, the effort is wasted. I glance up to see Lily gently sipping her cool tea without complaints, her face drawn and shoulders slumped. She looks to be deep in thought too, a strangely cold atmosphere coming between us as we isolate ourselves to mull the thing over. Even as Lily's cup slowly empties, mine remains untouched. It's a long time before I notice the rain dying down outside and a few other patrons of the Shanghai having left. This is the track, isn't it? No, oh, breathlessly, different track. The chill of the rapidly darkening evening permeates the dormitory always. While trudging down the corridor to my room, I can see an unwelcome movement from up ahead. Sure enough, the opening of the door opposite to mine heralds the arrival of a bespectacled Kenji. Hey man, what's... Whoa, dude, you look awful, I think. You okay? He really has a knack for making any situation better. I don't really want to go into it, it's like... Okay, that's cool. If you ever want to talk about it, now, get out here. I look at him for a moment before surrendering my stern front and awkwardly scratching the back of my neck, embarrassed by my standoffish response to him. Thanks, Kenji. Hey, it's cool. That's what friends are for, right? Yeah, you're right. Uh, see ya. Again, it's kind of interesting to see a bit more of Kenji's personality. Because it's, it's, he's quite an interesting character, really, isn't he? I open the door to my own dorm room and close it behind me as it quickly waves me off. The solid thud the door makes against the door frame sounds out as a final call for the life I left, I mean led, since coming to Yamaku. I just stand in my darkened room, fruitlessly attempting to work out what I should do from this point onwards. Just what should I do? This is what you should do, I sal. Do 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 That's what you should do. You should sing along to music. No. As class ends, I simply rest my head on my head. Yeah, you rest your head on your head, on my hand, and stare out the window the past time. It's been a few days since Lady told me her plans. I haven't been to our ordinary lunchtime hunt since then. Not that there would be much point. Monica has been busy with his famous club, she's nearly joined at SEOP. Back in her class and I'll be from now and then. Maybe really aside from the fact that a meeting between us would have been awkward in any case. Has been run off for a fees with class representative duties as the summer holidays approach. And now they're just about here, with the end of today's bell, the summer holidays will have begun. I suppose that's all I'll end up doing will be visiting my parents for the duration and lazing about my old home now that my previous plans are entirely askew. Meanwhile, Akra and Lily will be en route to Scotland to uh, live out the rest of their lives there. No matter how hard I try to rationalize the idea that once their summer holidays begin, my life will return to the way it was, it simply refuses to happen. 
Everyone's moving on with their lives. Louis rejoined their family. Akra's moving up in her father's business. Anako's gaining new friends and hobbies. And even Yuka is moving ahead with her university aspirations. You've now moving forward in the end. The marks I've gotten so far in Yamaku, much less after such a rocky beginning. The perhaps to get into teaching science as a career seems straightforward. I suppose I should at least be happy about that much, but it doesn't really seem to help. Hee-chan! I quickly stopped my ruminating and turned to face the bubbly voice beside me, putting on the most upbeat expression I can muster. As expected, she's in a stand flanking her. I have a sneaking suspicion they want something from me. Hey, Misha, Shizuni, what's up? I will leave it at that. I mean, we know what's up. They're going to invite him for the uh, work, essentially. <laughs> like, spoilers, much? We've already seen this scene, though. I imagine we'll be going into Lily's good ending path, thingamajig, whatever you want to call it, after this scene or part way through the scene. So I'm going to save it for next time. I'm not going to record it all in one sitting because I feel like shit, you know? <laughs> Just like, uh, I don't want to freaking, like, you know, after completing that freaking Pokemon game, and it's just like, going back to that, it's like, uh... It's just like, I don't want to complete this LP right off the bat, you know? I mean, it'd still be, you know, like, the after LP talk and going over CG mode and the music and all that shit, you know, recapping kind of stuff, you know, part. But, you know, I don't want to, like, record it all in one sitting. It's just, like, complete opposite how I did that. It's like I've rambled... In this recording where it's just like, oh man, I should have played it like sparingly, you know, so the plot would have gone on longer. And now suddenly I'm doing that right here. It's just like, now there's really much left unless the uh, last three scenes of Lily's Rout are long, I guess. But even then, I'd probably end up recording that in one sitting. So whatever. I'll see you next time here. See you next time.